Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below for French Quarter or any other game. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going down to the Big Easy New Orleans 2. Go into the French Quarter and see street performers and, and experience partying and shopping and all sorts of different activities. Today we're going to be taking a look at French Quarter. This is the new Roll and Write. Uh, it's from 25th Century Games. Uh, brought to you by the same designers who did Three Sisters and uh, Motor City. So let me show you how it works. I'll see you on the other side. In French Quarter, it is a roll and write and a flip and write because there's going to be cards of different types of movement of moving around the city, like walking in carriage or taxi, streetcar, riverboat, or socializing. And you'll be using these cards to take different actions, but you'll also be using the dice on these cards as well. So let's show you what you're trying to do, and then we'll come back and show you how you do it. Now each player is going to get two sheets. You have sort of the city here and then you have all the bonus tracks. Now at the end of the game you're going to be scoring for all different types of activities like food, culture, shopping, mysticism, and partying. And those all have to do with these lines over here. Think of these as tracks, food, uh, culture, shopping, mysticism, and partying. And as of the course of the game, you're going to be doing things to move down these tracks. The further you move down these tracks, you'll be unlocking possible bonuses. Some of them are one-time use, some of them are immediate, some of them are end-game goals. Uh, or you may be unlocking a multiplier, like times one, times two, times three for most of them, and then uh, one, three, or five for partying, because thematically, as you move up the partying track and you unlock bonuses, unlike most of these, which are always positive, you party too much, you actually have negative bonuses, but it helps you score more. Interesting twist in the game. So you're gonna be scoring for each of these in different ways. For example, you're gonna be unlocking, again, scoring multipliers, and these multipliers are gonna be multiplying by how many, uh, mapped buildings you have on a specific street. So each of these activities, scoring as you move up, combos with a specific street name. For example, on this partying track, I got a five times multiplier. We look at Bourbon Street, Bourbon Street's here. We look at how many uh, uh, times I actually map different things. There's three of them, three times five, that gets me 15 points. You're gonna be doing that for all of these, trying to figure out where these are on the streets. Now there's other things that's going on. There'll be bonuses of the second line going down the street. You're gonna be getting points throughout the game for this, depending on how many mapped uh, aspects that you have through, these, through this line. You're also gonna be getting points for specific buildings. Some buildings are spe uh, have special scoring like this one. Depending on how many you get of these done, there's four of them, you'll get two, six, 12, or 20 points. Sometimes you can add up the values in the certain gift shops. So there's different uh, buildings that also have some special scorings. And then performers. You're gonna have street performers, and then depending on each line of this, how many of these you're able to cross off, like three, I'll get three points. But if you get eight, you'll get 25 points. You'll have two lines of these that you'll be able to score as well. So in general, that's how you're scoring. So let's talk about how you go about doing it. Now the game is played over eight rounds, and each of the round, one card of each of these types is gonna be flipped over. There's plenty of cards, actually there's one card for each round. There's eight cards of each type. You'll just simply put it on top of, of each card one at a time. So here in round one, these are all our options. Now, by the way, these are the little tokens that you'll be using to move around your own maps. I love what these look like. This is the first player marker, just to show you that. The dice go from one to six, the fleur de lis are ones. So on your turn, you basically each round you're gonna be drafting two uh, sets, and a set is a card and a die. Now there's a certain amount of dice out depending on the amount of players, this is sort of a three player game. Now as you can see, uh, different cards allow you to move in different spots. Now an important point here is in the cards, every time we get a walk card, it's always gonna allow you to move one to two spaces. What will change is which activity you get to do, that's actually a wild. So in all these cards, the actual movement's the same, the die value is gonna possibly change because it gets rolled each round, and then these are gonna change. But you always know carriages you can move one to three, taxis you can move one to four, streetcars moves to any space on Duff, Duffine Street, riverboat moves to any space basically close to the water, and the socialize, uh, you know, this is gonna move you one space like that. So let's say I'm gonna draft this. Now we do this in a specific order. So we're gonna end up using four different things on this card. Number one is we're gonna activate the activities on this. This is an umbrella and that is culture. And so I've done the umbrella here. Now the umbrella is interesting. Every third time you get this, you'll see a star. That means you get a wild 
uh, track to move down on the activity. So it just gives you sort of a wild. So that's kind of cool. And the other one was the culture. So I'll start going left to right on this track. Now, when I get here, I get a bonus. That's what that means. I can cross, uh, you know, basically I'm going to cross this off and now I can move plus one or uh, plus two spaces, right? And, and I can decide when to do that. Now, in this case, uh, when you did do that, you would then cross this off when you've used it. Again, some of them are one time use, some of them are not. Uh, but as I move up the track again, we're going to get points for the multiplier. So that's sort of, we just did our activities there. But now we're gonna move one to three spaces. So one to three spaces, I'm gonna go like this, one, two, you never move di diagonal. I'm gonna move here. Now what this is going to allow me to do is actually uh, do what the building's activation is. This case, it's umbrella and shopping. So now next time I get an umbrella, I'll get a wild activation to, right, wild activity to cross off. Here, again, now I'm one against from a bonus from shopping. Now, the other thing is, is I can map this building. The die that was on that was a two, and in this case, I can map because there's nothing next to it. So now I have mapped this. Now, why did I pick this and what is mapping? Well, number one, this is on St. Peter Street. And if you remember, I already started working up this track. This track's multiplier, if I get to these different scorings, is going to multiply by the amount of places that I've mapped on St. Peter Street. This is St. Peter Street, anything that's on that street, this is one of them. So basically, I've already got one building mapped. Now, in the future, anything that is in cardinal directions of this, so that means this building, this building, this building, or this building, has to be either a two, a one, or three. Basically the number it is, or a number below, or a number higher. And six and one do not wrap. So that is why I have done that, and that would basically just be my turn. Now other players are going to be drafting, it will come back to me, I'll draft one, so everyone basically drafts two, there'll be one left over at the end. Now let's say I was the one to draft the Socialize. In addition to doing everything that I showed you before, uh, at the beginning of the game, everyone will randomly be have a, have a spot where the second line starts, and the person that drafted that Socialize card gets to say what direction this goes in one block like this, and then they score one, uh, they, they mark off one second line box for every mapped building that it passes. So as the game goes on, if you can make that go near uh, a bunch of your mapped buildings, you're gonna be getting a bunch of these. Each of those boxes is worth a point at the end of the game. I mean, that's pretty much it. You're gonna be drafting twice per round, so 16 turns, and adding up all the points as I showed you earlier, whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, well, obviously, uh, the theme's right up my alley, being a saxophone player. Uh, still never been to New Orleans, though, although I know plenty of players there that would, uh, uh, that have invited me to come, I just have not been there. Things I like about it first, uh, I like that, you know, there's, there's rolling rights and there's flipping rights and this is a rolling flipping right i'm not sure i've played one of these before maybe i have but off the top of my head i can't think of one i like how they sort of joined those two things together uh, coming into this i you know rolling rights have been super popular and uh, i i've been burnt out on on most of them that come through uh but pinch uh, ben pinchback, pinchback and matt riddle uh you know they did three sisters and and, and uh, motor city and stuff and they tend to do ones that I really like. So they're one of the few that I still like look forward to playing when it's a rolling right. So that's sort of my bias is sort of coming in here. Uh, I like that you're trying to match certain things to combo together. You're trying to match an activity, one of the activities, whether it's food or you know partying or shopping or things like that, with a specific street. Uh, I have no idea if thematically those tie, because again, I've never been there, but I like that you're trying to do that. You're trying to move up a track from a specific activity, but then you're trying to map streets on there for the multiplier. I like that. It gives you some, those are the, you know, the big points in the game. So you're trying, those, that's like your main overarching thing that you're trying to do, but there's a lot of other options. Um, you're, you're trying to, you know, essentially multiply that together because, you know, the, the multiplier is huge. You got the, you're trying to build the buildings. It's not that easy as I'll kind of go over a, a, a little bit more about, about that later. Uh, I like that as you're moving up the different tracks, one of them is pretty thematic. The partying track gives you negative ability. Like you can't do this. You can't do that. Uh, you can't use uh, street performers anymore, things like that. But it has the possible a possibility of having the highest bonus. It goes up to five times, or the other ones only go up to three times. I think the other ones go like times one, times two, or times three. I think the partying goes like times one, times three, times five. So it has the best bonus, but it also is going to slow you down in other areas. Maybe those don't matter as much. Maybe they do. You end up at the police station when you do that, things like that. Uh, I like that when you're selecting, uh, when it's your turn, you're selecting something for a lot of different reasons. You're selecting it for the die value. You're selecting it for the actions that happen to be on that card this round. You're selecting it for the movements, which are the same each round for the same card, which I like because that you can always know which cards move you certain ways or into certain streets. 
but it's the die and the the icons or the activities that change on those from from round to round. Uh, so some of the things are changing, some of the things are stagnant. I like how that balances well. There's not too many things moving all at once, uh, and, and you know then you're building or mapping with the die. So. It's interesting because you have so many options for each turn, uh, for all these strategies of what you're trying to do, where you are right now, where the second line is for the extra points, uh, which building streets are you trying to get to map, what die is on that, uh, what die, die value is there, because you, when you map things, this brings me to the next thing. When you're mapping adjacent, all adjacent things that are mapped have to be, you know, that number or plus or minus one. That really reminded me of a roll and write. It was it originally came out of like Rolling Japan and then it came out as Rolling America, where you're, you know, you're going around different, everything adjacent has to be within one. And it really is a puzzly thing. And I like that they kind of used that seed of an idea and brought it into a bigger game where you are trying to map things around. There's even one of the bonuses that allows you to write a you know, a, a W in there, or a, it's not a number, but you can map it. And mapping's huge. You need to map because at the end, again, those multipliers only matter if you're able to map map that track's bonuses to how many streets you've actually mapped by drawing the number in there. But you can only draw a number in there if it matches or is plus one or minus one from every building around it that you've already mapped. I like it. If you can't map, you get an umbrella, which helps move up that track, which gives you more... Uh, you know, wild abilities and things like that. So it all sort of works together. Uh, the things that, that I think could be improved about the game, for me, and then this might be just because I'm getting older and I'm having more trouble seeing smaller text, the text on the, on the sheets are just way too small. It's really hard to see. Uh, also, the color choices and the way things are are also hard to see. However, I did see that they did just release, recently release a high contrast version of the sheets on Board Game Geek that you can download. You still need to have the game, of course, uh, but you can download the sheets and they are much improved from a contrast perspective. The streets now have some like ba white background, so you can really read the street names a lot easier. Uh, and that does help from seeing certain things. However, I would still really like to see these, these sheets bigger. Uh, quite honestly, I get they're trying to fit into the same size box as the other ones, so it's gonna keep the price down, it's gonna keep shipping down, stuff like that, I get it. I would love for them to release some sheets that are in the high contrast mode, but double the size of each of the sheets. That way it's like a full sheet, and you know what I'll do? I'll print one off for each player, I'll laminate it, I'll use the dry erase markers that I have, uh, and I'll be able to now actually see what's going on. There is a lot going on in these sheets, not being able to see it that well, having it be really tiny was a big detriment for me. It might not be for you if you're young and you got great eyes, but please, 25th century, just double the size, put it on Bill Green Geek, we can print it out and laminate it, that'll, that'll fix that. Um, the bonuses, some of the bonuses, like shopping for example, it's not obvious if it's an instant one or, uh, or a one-time one. Now if you go back in the rules, you can see and it will tell you but sometimes they're not super obvious. Um, like, like, like on the shopping one, they should have left the box with the W empty. So you circle it in the little circle, and then once you do it, you put the W in that box or cross off that box, let you know that you've done it. Because that's not one that's immediate. You have to one time, and it's it's not really that intuitive. You have to go look at the rules. I wish they would have done that. Maybe put the little lightning bolt or the one-time use above or down, or made them a little bit more obvious. Um, also, ongoing bonuses can be a little hard to remember. Sometimes you're going down, you're choosing between bonuses or the points. One of the best decisions in the game, by the way. If you're working on some streets or activities that you're not really mapping that much, go for the bonus. If you're working on the points, you're probably going to take the points. So it's, it's tough. It gives you some, some longer term strategies. But sometimes they can be hard to remember. Like, uh, like on, the, on the partying track, I think the last one was, you know, you cannot gain performer icons. Okay, that's great, but there's a million other things going on in the game. Sometimes you might forget them. I don't know a way around this, but there can be a lot of ongoing bonuses that you have to sort of remember. Oh, I forgot to take this thing. I could have done this and stuff like that. You just got to make sure you, 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 you really get your bonuses and remember them. Um, the second line, which is sort of that bonus when someone takes up the, the, the socialization card and it's making the second line a certain direction and you're getting points for how many you know, uh, places you've mapped, buildings you've mapped. The weird thing is, is that the scoring, there's, there's 10 boxes, but only nine of them are used for scoring. The 10th one is actually like the umbrella. Uh, so it lets you go with the umbrella. And it's, it was just weird to me that as you're, as you're uh, counting your score, it's always lines of nine. It just would have been a lot easier for the scoring perspective to just make 10 boxes of the second line, make the 11th box the umbrella. So you can quickly look, oh, 10, 13, all right? 
it's not that big a deal. It's just a minor nitpick. I think there should have been 10 boxes each line, not nine. Even if you're never really going to get all of those points, it would have just been easier for counting the scoring and seeing things. Um, and the last thing is scoring. As you're going through and you're going activity and looking at the, the streets and how many did I do my map over here? Sometimes finding the streets can take a little bit. Now, granted, the more you play this and you learn where the streets are, it won't be that big a difference. But your first two or three plays, you're going to be like, okay, now where's St. Anne? Ooh, okay, wait, where's, you know, and, and, and you, it takes a little bit sometimes. Um, I do like, though, in the, in the cards where one of the cards lets you go to... Uh, the subway, uh, the, the train, and the other one lets you go using like sort of the ferry. I like that thematically on the on the cards or on the sheets, the one with the steamboat brings you right next to the water, and the one with the subway takes you to the to the top line there where the, where the train is. I like those iconographies, but the, still finding some of the 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 the, uh, the cities the, the the streets can can take a little bit as you're trying to score everything. But overall, I think if you liked Matt uh, Riddle's uh, Ben Pitchback Matt Riddle's designs, there is another uh, co-designer. I apologize, I don't have his name off the top of my head. Uh, if you've liked their previous ones, I think you're gonna like this. I wouldn't say this is as combo tastic as say like Three Sisters, uh, but it's definitely more streamlined than Motor City. Uh, it's kind of like in the, in the middle there. Um, I think Three Sisters is still my favorite. I think this is my second favorite. And Motor City, I like the least of all three. Um, I love the theme here. I love the look. I like the flip around. I like all the decisions. If you've liked their games, chances are you're going to like this one. And that's French Quarter. Game Toppers upgrades every game you play. And if you missed their 4.0 Kickstarter, you can still late pledge and take advantage of over 40 unlocked stretch goals and early fulfillment. This campaign featured a new young Sherlock table, perfect for children's gaming and movable coffee table, 10 new thematic mats by top artists like Vincent Dutre, a new designer art series Mycroft topper with thematic art from Brent Woodside, and some of the best package deals they've had, including game mat bundles. Go to GameToppers LLC or click the link below to late pledge now.